Time to talk Ohio politics. Today, in no particular order, Ohio's oldest governor takes his oath of office. Medical marijuana now being sold, women to dominate the new Ohio House Democratic leadership team, and state revenue for road and bridge construction turning in the wrong direction. I'm Dave Morris, and to help us through these political headlines, we turn to my colleague Jim Siegel, Ohio State House reporter for the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing quite well. I mentioned that uh, Ohio's new governor took his oath of office. It actually happened earlier this week. You were there. You heard the speech. What did we hear? Well, as uh, is a. It's not uh, untypical when you, a new governor comes in. I mean, he's full of hope and promise, uh, saying that you know Ohio's best days are still ahead of it. Um, but it, not, nothing particularly out of the ordinary, though, in terms of in terms of what he's talking about. I mean, look, we've we just came off of eight years of a Republican governor, uh, John Kasich. Uh, Mike DeWine uh, is also obviously a Republican, and so there's there's not a lot of big expectation that he's going to sh- do a lot of shifting of gears uh, over what we've you know like some of the policies that we've seen. He is a conservative, uh, but it, but he's also a you know some see him as a more of a pra- you know pragmatic conservative. He does. Uh, see the need for uh, a role in government in some areas. And in fact, one of his very first initiatives that he's come out and said he wants to do is to uh, triple the funding uh, for in-home visits for uh, sort of uh, young and and at-risk parents um, in in an attempt to try to make sure that they're 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 settled and they're okay and that they're they're getting a good start with their new child and um, I think you're going to see more of that theme come from him with early childhood education and other things you know basically uh, there, there's been a continuing call here from some groups in, in Ohio that we're not doing enough uh, to help uh, help kids before they get into um, before they get into school before they start kindergarten and there's a there's a hope that they will in fact uh, uh, that he will uh, address some of those issues. I mentioned that he's Ohio's oldest governor. He's 72 years old, Governor DeWine. Uh, it seemed like he was planting the seeds, as you mentioned, for some of the younger people, perhaps some uh, initiatives that would take place even beyond his term. Oh, yeah, he's, he's hoping to set the stage uh, you know, long term, I think. Uh, uh, there is, you know, so, some wonder if he will serve or will try to serve two full terms. Uh, as you said, he is 72. Uh, there would. I don't think there'd be a lot of surprise uh, if he only served one term and then handed off the reins to his lieutenant governor, uh, John Husted. Uh, but but he has not said it, never said that, uh, that he was going to do that. Um, but that, like I said, that's just something that we would not be surprised if he did, uh, just con- you know, considering the, you know, the age in which he's coming into the office. Um, though most who know him know that he's a, a very hard worker. Um, he said he's been an attorney general for eight years has served in many roles uh, and before that as well, including U.S. Senator and Lieutenant Governor. So we're, you know, folks are expecting him to be very active, maybe not quite the in the same fashion as John Kasich, who was a little more of a uh, wrecking ball type uh, when he came in. But uh, uh, we don't expect to be bored uh, by, by what he's uh, going to start proposing. I also know that you uh, share with your Twitter followers those who may be missing John Kasich. Well, they can watch him on TV now. He has joined the ranks of CNN. Uh, one thing we mentioned off the top of some policy for Governor DeWine, though, is a transportation budget problem, and that's something that the state will have to look at. Yeah, the uh, basically the the state has run out of money for new transport, new major transportation projects, new major construction uh, stuff that's already in in the works, already being built, will be finished. But there's just no new money to do anything else uh, in terms of new uh, new interchanges, uh, freeway uh, widenings, or anything of that nature. Things are really add to capacity. Uh, Ohio five years ago did uh, sold bonds against future uh, tolls on the turnpike to raise about a billion and a half dollars, and that money has run out, and so that uh, that's not an option anymore. Um, and there's groups now that have formed a, a pretty pretty broad coalition that are going to be pushing the governor and legislature to do a gas tax increase. Ohio's gas tax is about six cents below the national average and hasn't been increased since 2005. Yeah, and the dispatch reporter, you're right, it hasn't increased in about 13 years. On this topic, what's next? I'm assuming there's probably some studies that will bubble to the surface for the legislature to consider. Yeah, the, the legislature in the last two transportation budgets have actually implemented their own studies. Um, some would say they haven't been uh let's let's be nice uh, as robust as uh, some had hoped 
Um, and mainly, you know, and frankly, the main reason is because oftentimes you study the transportation issue and the, the uh, what comes back is, well, you need to raise the gas tax. And of course, no one likes to hear that. Uh, Governor DeWine is going to institute his own study panel and uh, but, but folks who are close to this situation believe that, that a gas tax increase, at least in the short term, is really the only way to provide additional funding for these uh, major construction projects. Uh, but there is also hope that maybe he'll start looking into the future and deciding uh, there may be some new ways to go about uh, putting fees and taxes on electric vehicles and others that are, are part of the problem in which they just don't use as much gas, so they don't pay as much gas tax, which just leaves the Ohio short on revenue. Two more topics to cover. We're uh, chatting here with Jim Siegel with the Columbus Dispatch. You reported this morning on Dispatch.com that uh, the new Ohio House Democratic leadership team will be dominated by women. Yeah, three out of four of the uh, the, the House Democrats will be, uh, their leadership team will be women. Um, now this is, uh, including the leader, the minor new minority leader will be uh, Representative Amelia Sykes out of Akron. Um, look, the, the House of Representatives in Ohio now has a record number of women serving, thanks to uh, the results from the November election. I believe it's, uh, believe it's now 28 uh, women out of the 99 are, are, are serving. Uh, that's, like I said, that's a record number. Uh, and 19 of them are, are Democrats, so that means half of their caucus is, uh, is women. So it's probably not a surprise that they are going to dominate the uh, the leadership team. Uh, we're also still waiting to see how uh, new speaker Larry Householder fills out his leadership team on the Republican majority because uh, that, that that is where the fight has been. Uh, the, there's, but there was a huge fight over uh, majority leadership, over who's going to be the speaker. Uh, last week, Larry Householder uh, emerged victorious, but only because House Democrats gave him enough votes to win. Uh, Householder did not have a majority of support in his own caucus and among his own Republicans, and now he's going to have to mend some bridges and uh, and, and try to move forward um, in that way. But uh, he's uh, he still has not he still has not come forward with his his leadership team yet. It'll be interesting to see how that all works itself out. And you can follow the latest on those politics there at the state capitol on dispatch.com. Jim, I'll get you out of here on one final subject. One of the lead headlines today, medical marijuana sales are underway. Yeah, we finally, uh, you know, we're, we're several months late uh, from when we were supposed to have this done. This was supposed to be done, uh, I think, last fall. Uh, but, yeah, Ohio... Um, Ohio did did approve. Uh, legislators did approve a system for medical marijuana. It's a pretty uh, pretty tight system. Uh, you're only allowed to purchase it from specific dispensers. Uh, only specific doctors can can uh, actually prescribe it. And you uh, you know only certain growers are allowed to do it. And it's you can't smoke it. It has to be done in pill or, or liquid form. And um, there's only certain diseases and uh, ailments in which you can use it for. But yes, it did start up finally today. The first folks who were in line got, got their marijuana for their treatments, uh, and they and I know they're very happy about it. They're, it's been a long time coming. Uh, the legislators were trying to hold you do this in order to, to fend off um, ballot issues that were actually trying to be more uh, loose with the laws and allow more uh, more marijuana use than just uh, strictly for, for medical. Uh, we could still see that in the future again, but for now, yes, Ohio is, uh, is officially joins the ranks of the states that are in the uh, medical marijuana business. Good stuff. And chatting with Jim Siegel. Hey, you can listen to the latest Buckeye Forum Politics podcast on Dispatch.com. You can also follow along on Twitter at Dispatch Alerts. And don't forget, you can join the conversation on Facebook at Columbus Dispatch as well. Jim Siegel with the Columbus Dispatch. Appreciate your time today. Good job. Hey, great talking to you.